and thanks to everybody for taking time to join us today. Dr. Jeffrey is a special person to me, not only as a great trader, but as a gentleman, I respect him a lot. So whenever he asks me if I can share my ideas with his audience, his audience, <laughs> I am always very keen to do that. And it is my pleasure to join Dr. Jeffrey today again. I am not a slides guy, but I will share one important slide, one or two maybe. I swing trade stocks. I retired from information technology when I was 46 years old. My last job was as managing director of a German multinational. I was MD for the India office that I set up and I was also consulting director for the Asia Pacific region. Prior to that, I used to work as a vice president in communications global business unit consulting division for a company called Oracle Corporation for Asia Pacific. All these jobs were based in Singapore. For about 20 years, I worked in Singapore. At 46 years of age, I decided to have a more free life. So I gave up my job and eventually I moved to Thailand. While I was working, I started developing a trading system. I gave it a name Q, C for complete, U for unambiguous as much as I could make it and E for easy to use or so I thought. <laughs> yeah. I continue to use that system. It has improved over time. I have only one developer that is myself and I continue to think like a trader and incorporate new things. How I trade using the system is as important as the system itself. I regularly share them on my website, sagarnandi.com, which is also the site www.superiorprofit.co. They are the same site. I regularly share ideas there and also share YouTube videos and tweets. And I also regularly participate in Dr. Jeffries discord board. This is my email ID. Today I will share a few things with you. Before that is the important slide that I wanted to share. I am not an investment advisor. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. What am I going to cover today. I will not have enough time to do justice to the Q systems. I cannot explain all of them in this 45 minutes. However, what I can do is demonstrate live use of the system. I will do that. I will look at the market using the tools I have. I will explain what is my plan for the next week. I will review some of the Bible stocks later. But among all these things, one important basis that I want to share with you. Probably you all know that, but sometimes it is good to see it visually to realize that what I tend to say that there is no reason we should lose money in the market. And if we are losing money, like I used to do earlier, then the reason is not in the market. It is not in some market manipulation. It is not in some misleading news coming in the media. If we are losing money in the market, the reason is inside ourselves. And once we understand the basis, that is one basis, the basis that I use for swing trading profitably in all markets. And I will demonstrate that. Once you understand the basis and you internalize the basis, it is not difficult. And I, I, I'll again say it is difficult to lose money in the market when, once we understand the basis. I will share that. I think that is important part. Important part of my success. I will look at the 360 degree analysis, I call it 360 degrees because it could be top down or bottom up or it could be from a lateral side using something called insights. 
I will review some of the recent trade ideas and of course current trade ideas. I hope I have time for doing all this. Now, firstly, let me go through some of the resources on my site. And that was the last slide, by the way. This is a very simple slide. On the menu bar, I have set up all the important links. Home is, of course, home. Twitter will take you to the Twitter page, my Twitter page. YouTube to my YouTube channel, Trading Profitably. Let's look at the Twitter page. By the way, neither on my Twitter nor on my YouTube channel, nor through the emails that you get, when you subscribe to the forum, will there ever be any email asking you to buy anything? There is no cross-sell, there is no upsell, there is no selling at all. It is only for sharing what I am looking at. And you will have an idea whether I am buying or whether I am shorting if you follow me on Twitter and on my YouTube, on my forum. Those who follow me for six months, one year, know that I tend to be a little bit ahead of others and that helps in my success rate. How am I able to be a little bit ahead of others? That is because I look at things holistically and I look at the trees and I also look at the forest together. Over time I have trained myself to do that. It is not difficult. On Twitter page I share live market and stock analysis. On YouTube channel trading profitably. Every week I share weekly market roundup video. I shared this week's video already. That is weekend market roundup. And every Wednesday I have a Q Traders Meet. It is Q Traders Meet, however, it is open to the public. It's a live session. In fact, nowadays the market roundup is also a live session, YouTube live. Wednesday market meet is also live sessions. These are ongoing webinars, ongoing videos, how I'm looking at the market, how I'm picking stocks. Then there is a list of featured videos. Those who start to using Q systems, they may watch them and also the tutorials. Why I came here is to point you to one important video. I shared it earlier, how to make 40 to 60% or more, maybe less also, annual profit on total capital, whatever be your capital, whether it is 10,000 or 30,000 or 1 million or 10 million, there is a basis for making 40 to 60% annual profit, risking only 2%, I should say risking only 1% on each trade swing trading stocks. It is possible and I'll explain the basis. The advantage of swing trading are many and two most important advantages to me are we are able to both long and short. When the market comes down, we can quickly change direction to bearish side and if the market rallies again, we can go back to the buy side again. So we are able to make money on both sides. And the other important part is the money works harder. Meaning if my average holding period is five to seven days, in a year, the capital can, can potentially work for 50 times. Whereas if I just buy and hold a stock throughout the year, the capital can work only one times. Sometimes we do not realize how huge difference that repeated use of the same money can make. And that is where is the basis of my trading. I have put it in this dollar icon. That is the basis of my trading. And that is simple arithmetic. This arithmetic has nothing to do with Q systems or any other systems. It is simple arithmetic. And if you understand this, you may, may I don't know, you may alter your thinking of how to make money in the market. Let's say, I am taking two trades a week. That comes to about 100 trades per year. I am assuming a very conservative, I think. You are all very smart, very intelligent, very successful people. 
I will assume that success rate of 60% is achievable. Why I say that? If we consider the market to be random, then over a large number of trades, if we closed our eyes, if we tossed a coin and took trades, over a large number of trades, considering a random market statistically, we should have six, we should have 50% success rate. But we are not closing our eyes. We have access to the industry insight, the fundamental technical insight. So I am expecting that we will have a little bit of age, 60% success rate. If we have 60% success rate, then at the end of the year, you will end up with 60 profitable trades and 40 losing trades, therefore 20 net profitable trades. Now comes the risk management part. What was the first part? The first part was related to lifestyle. Can we take two trades per week? That is related to one's lifestyle. Second comes the risk tolerance. How much risk are we going to take in each short term trading? Let's start with very conservative number, only 1% of equity. So if I have $10,000 in my equity to start with, I'm going to risk only $100 in each trade. Next comes the parameter for execution efficiency. What is the average reward risk ratio that I'm expecting? Some people attempt one is to two, one is to three, one is to four. It is possible depending on the holding period. But for short term trading, let me assume, and I think you would agree, a very conservative ratio of one reward to risk. If you apply these parameters, number of trades per week, the success rate, risk tolerance, and execution efficiency, you will see at the end of the year, you are having 20% of equity as profit, as net profit. And when we look back on our trading account, we may use this as a minimum benchmark that if we don't get 20% return on US dollar investment in the USA market, then probably we could just put it in fixed deposit. But these parameters, I think you will agree that it is very conservative. Now, what if my lifestyle allows me to take four trades? I'm not going to change my success rate. I'm not taking more risk. I'm not expecting better execution efficiency just by increasing the number of trades to four in a week, which is not much by any means, my annual return on total equity becomes 40%. The beauty of this framework, this arithmetic is that you don't need to increase your risk to increase your return. You don't even have to be more proficient to increase your return. You just need to take more trades. And it is like playing the casino part. The more trades you take, the advantage is more and more and more on your side, just like how the casino operates. So long as you have an edge. If you have six trades per week, then the profit percentage on total capital becomes 60%. Now, what if my success rate is not 60? What if it is, I will not go through the 65%, let me just go to 70%. What if my success rate is 70%, I'm still taking two trades a week, I'm not increasing my risk. This part I want to keep constant. It is very important to be profitable consistently is to keep the risk to the minimum. So I'm not thinking of increasing the risk not in the beginning. I'll explain later under what situation I may suggest increasing this. But for now, it is at 1%. I'm not expecting better reward risk ratio just by increasing the success rate to 70%. Now the annual return becomes 40% of total capital. Remember, not invested capital. At a time, we may have eight positions, 10 positions open, fully open, some partially closed. But we are not going to deploy probably all the capital, but the profit percentage we are talking about here based on the simple arithmetic is on total capital. That is also a way to manage risk. And if you are taking six trades per week with 70% success rate, same risk, same 
execution efficiency, your annual return is 120%. Now let's go forward a few more slides. What if I am taking, let's say four trades per week, not two, not six, let's say four trades per week, 70% success rate. And I am now risking 2% of capital in each trade. Same execution efficiency. Now my annual return is becoming 160%. Under what situation I suggest that we can go to 2% of risk is after you make some profit already in the account, you can use 1% of the original capital and a percentage of the profit capital in a way that it becomes 2% of the original capital. And that is also very risk averse. Psychologically, you will be able to handle that much better than risking your original capital. And going by this arithmetic, somewhere between 40 to 100% or 60% should not be unachievable. What is the difficulty in it? If you see the number of trades is a lifestyle parameter, you can control that. It is in your control. The risk in each trade, it is in your control. Nobody can tell you how much risk to take in each. It's absolutely in your control. Only thing you need to achieve using the systems, techniques, tools that you have is your success rate between 60 to 70% consistently and I think average reward risk ratio of one is very much achievable. So really only parameter that you need to worry about if worry is the right term is, are you able to get 60 to this column, 60 to 70% success rate? I think we can because again, considering a random market, the success rate should be 50% over a large number of trades. And we have certain tools that gives us an edge. Therefore, at least 60% is achievable. Now I share trading ideas regularly for years on the traders forum. Sagarnandi.com is also the forum under this category. By the way, the site has nothing much but different categories of topics. One is Sagarnandi's stock picks. I share the ideas regularly and they tend to do well. I know because I have an eye on my accounts and sometimes people ask me, why don't you catalog them and show what is the success rate? But I'm not interested in marketing. If so, I would not have retired from my work. So I was not interested in that. However, six and a half months ago, I opened an account with Charles Schwab. Great company, by the way, great people. The platform is not so great. So I was not going to use for my main trading. I opened the account because they are taking over TD Ameritrade. Because I moved to Thailand, I could not use Thinkorswim anymore, which I think is one of the great platforms. Trestation is the other one. Metastock is the third one. In any case, I opened the account waiting for the merger to be completed, but the merger is not complete. I was at least six months ahead. So I deposited some money. The minimum balance they asked for is 30,000. So I deposited 33,000 thinking that if I take it as a demo account and trade with real money, first few trades may go into a loss. I need to keep some cushion. So I deposited $33,000 about six and a half months ago, sometimes in February. Now let's look at the market, what happened. Was the timing perfect? I opened the account, which was supposed to be a kind of demo account. And why demo account? Because I realized they have excellent analytics that I could share with people at least once without me needing to consolidate data and present it. So I opened the account here and the market fell sharply. And equally sharply, it recovered. Was it bad thing? It should not be, right? Because I mentioned earlier that swing traders, short-term traders has an advantage. If they are able to 
switch direction from long to short, they should be able to money throughout, throughout this downfall, throughout this up move. That was the weekly chart, even over the last two days when it fell sharply. I shared the result on Twitter, but why Twitter? I have the Charles Schwab account here. I wanted to point you out to some important things. And that is the reason I use Charles Schwab account. This analytics is very useful. I have selected six months here. The account was opened six and a half months ago. See some important things. The gross gain loss ratio, this is like the cash flow. If you consider trading as a business, if it is more towards the larger part is green, then you are making money. What is the success rate is here? 74% over six months. What are the instruments that this analytics is showing? Stocks and ETF transactions only. What is the profitability rate? Average gain versus average loss? 5.2 versus 4.6. What are the key parameters here? This is my reward risk ratio. I expected it to be one. It is better than one. What is my success rate? 74.8, almost 75. What was my expectation? Only 60, maybe 70, but even 60 is good enough. I could get 40% annual return on total capital just by taking about 200 trades in a year, not much. Not much for any of us, I think, swing trades. So I could achieve the parameters that were the basis of making considerable annual gain. And if you see the number of transactions, this is not the number of trades. In six months, there are 254 transactions, closing transactions, as they say it. I tend to exit partial position at reward risk ratio one level and try to hold on to the remaining position. I'm not a long-term investor, but still I exit partial position. Therefore, every trade consists of at least two exits. So you may think that this is more like 120 or 100 to 120 trades, you may say, in six months, not much. What I am showing that the basis that I showed to you that will allow you to achieve very large profit consistently is achievable. Now this has to be consistent. So let's look at it. Let's look at the last 30 days. Okay, I'll come to 30 days later. Let's look at three months first. I still have positive cash flow. My average gain loss is little bit less than one, and I'll explain why. Success rate is still very high, 74%. If I choose 30 days, I'm still making money. The average gain loss ratio is not looking so good, but see my success rate almost 79%. Now they go hand in hand. So it is okay. If one is going higher, the other is lower is okay. And then comes another thing. Those who are following me, they know that I shared how I am managing my positions during the last couple of days, last couple of weeks. I took certain options. As hedging, I am not taking options as a speculative instrument. I take them as a stock substitute, maybe with synthetic long position, or maybe short the put, or I may take verticals. None of them are going to expand my profitability hugely, but they allow me to manage the positions nicely. Now, you see the profitability that apparently declined, actually it didn't, because the profit I made from options was much more than the loss that I accepted in some of the stock positions. And how do I know that? Let's come back to the six months result. The net gain is 
14,396 on the 33,000 account in six months based on stocks and ETF transactions. But if you look at the weekly, remember 14,396. If we look at the weekly curve, actual profit is 20,908 in the $33,000 account. And that is because the options gave me sizable profit as a hedging instrument. So we have to take that into consideration. What you are seeing in the other analytics that my profitability declined, it didn't. If you consider the options that I took at the same time, I achieved 65 0.5% profitability and even on Friday I had a 4.5% gain. I'll explain later how could I gain. It's not only because of options but because I could take some short trades. Again I believe well ahead of others. Two more important things I want to point to. Point to. I am not risking a large amount in any trade. If you see the bubble chart, neither am I taking large profits nor am I taking large losses. I'm just taking many trades, small risk in each trade and making considerable profit overall. And if you see the equity curve, it is steadily going up, whether it is down market or up market from February to now. Now that I achieved using what I call 360 degrees analysis. And what are the tools I use for that 360 degrees analysis? I use Q Elite on TradeStation and Q Global, Q Finder on Metastock for technical analysis. Q Vital for fundamental and peer analysis. All are visual tools. I am not a numbers guy. I look at QH for sector industry rotation analysis and Q index for market level index analysis. Now let me go through some of these tools. One way is to look at some of the recent trades. By the way, all the ideas that I share, 100% of them I share before knowing the result. I will go through them quickly. You know the resources where to look for them. You may review them later. Four days ago, I shared a post on SOXX, the semiconductor ETF, and I always shared the charts that I'm looking at. At that time, and these charts are created using QH, the real-time sector industry analysis tool. I see a question, what option book should I recommend? I, 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 I am not the best person to answer about the options book. I'm sure somebody else can answer that. I just take simple options, mostly verticals. I, I cannot, I'm not the best person to recommend on options book. Coming back, what I saw about semiconductors on that day using real time data that Earlier it was going up and on that day it declined sharply, both, both for semiconductor equipment and semiconductors, these industries. Then I looked at the chart. There are indicators in Q systems. I'm not going to go through the detail, but I will tell you what I saw. The jump and thrust indicators in the weekly chart were showing red dots, meaning that a pullback was due. The weekly candle shape was bearish. And you know, I have a habit to mark the important points on the charts when I shared them. In the weekly, it was creating a false upside move. There was a bear release signal. It was coming down with heavy bearish pressure at price extreme high with a bearish flow. I noted there was a smart trend line support nearby. So I shared it and the post was of course bearish. I took a options put position, not in this account, the account that I showed, not in that account, in another account. And I bought the put options at $14.3, 300 strike. 
October expiry. And next day, I closed it at $20. That is about 45, 40, 40, I think 40% profit in one day. And see how I exited the trade. It hit the memory support. And initially it came down, came near the next memory trend line support and it was starting to go up and I used the fine tuned real time chart to exit my position. I would not like to hold a position, bearish position when it is coming inside the memory support again. So that was a bearish trade. I think I timed it very well and I could do that because of the Q systems. I want to show two more examples quickly. This was 13 days ago. I don't think many people were bearish at that time. 13 days ago, this was a trade on Home Builder ETF XHB. What did I see? The industry was strong earlier, right at that time, using real time data. It weakened sharply. This is industry score and base column was showing it was decelerating at the same time. I looked at the chart. Again, the thrust and jump indicators were showing a pullback was overdue. I noted the memory support and this bearish headwind reversal signal that comes at the very top appeared. Bear release signal also appeared. There was a reversal candle at price extreme high. I took a short call vertical position, expecting to book profit at the next memory support line. And let's see how I exited the trade on Friday. Here is where I shared my idea first. On Friday, it hit the memory support. It started to go up. I booked my full position profit. One more trade. This I shared 17 days ago. Again, I don't think many people were bearish at that time. That was HSKA. I found it from QFinder. QFinder showed that it had a gap down move, a go with flow trend following short setup. It was down by 2.9%. The industry was weak with deceleration, healthcare equipment industry. And I look at fundamentals, but I look at only key colors. And it was showing me it was the overvalued stock with very large negative earnings growth, decelerating earnings growth. On that day, 72% of the 72 PR stocks in healthcare equipment were down. So everything was weak, industry, fundamental, and the chart. The very smart memory trend line resistance was there in weekly as well as daily. It was showing a bear release signal in the weekly. The daily showed a bearish flow. I was aware of the next memory support line. HSKA didn't have much options liquidity, so I took a short position using stocks. How did it turn out? On Friday, it hit the initial target memory support and I exited my position. Why did I exit? Because I saw it had now memory support and resistance both inside what I call a triangle. It gave me the risk distance, so I took it. And I always keep that arithmetic, the basis that I shared with you up front. I just need one is to one reward risk ratio and only 60%. Of course, my actual success rate, as you saw, is more like 70 to 75, sometimes 78, let's say average conservatively 70%. So I just need to keep on taking trades and book profit at reward risk ratio one. And that is what I did. How do I find these trades? I showed you the technical systems are running either on TradeStation, great platform, or Metastock also, I think it's a great platform. I can do Top down, bottom up both. For top down, I start with QH. All of these tools run in completely real time mode. The home page of QH shows the 
advanced decline in real time for sectors, industries, and stocks. And this helps a lot to make a decision. Even if you are planning for a buying opportunity tomorrow, you may keep an eye on this to decide whether to initiate the trade at the market open or wait, because these pie charts will keep changing. What it is showing me, Friday was a balanced day. Over two day period, it is bearish, weekly period, bearish. If I look at the bar charts, five day bearish, 10 day bullish however, and one month is also bullish. So it was bullish longer term, it turned bearish. On Friday, it was balanced. I explained in my weekly market roundup video, I am more inclined to take long trades now, swing trades. Where do I look for them? I can click these buttons to drill down from this overall view to the sectors and instantly from the cyan color, you know, financials was the strongest on Friday over two days and it is improving over a period of time. Instantly, we know that. What I do then, I drill down. I could drill down to the industries or stocks. Let me do step by step. I am drilling down to the financial industries. And I want to only look at the financial industries that were strongest on Friday. Let's say these five. I can drag and highlight anywhere. Click the stock scorecard icon and it will show me all the stock scorecard. First thing I want to do is look for stocks that are both undervalued as well as having great earnings growth. And I have buttons for doing that star candidate and I found several. Out of them, I did some work already before today's session. Okay, I clicked the wrong, wrong button. I'm sorry, I have to go back. I clicked this, what is called inside button. This inside buttons went back to the memory cache and recalculated everything. I didn't want that. I wanted to drill down from financials. So let me go back again. I can just click this stocks. Instead of using the inside buttons, I'm going to look for undervalued stocks with earnings growth in the last quarter. Only two. If you are following me on my forum, you know I both I have shared about both these stocks. But these are not the two stocks I'm going to share today. Let me share and I'm going to close Meta Stock so that I can open only the relevant charts. I'm going to talk about BHF and, and, and PACW, where is PACW? PACW and WBS, where is WBS? What they have in common, they are all undervalued stocks. Earnings growth in the last quarter is not great, but that is okay. I am looking for either value or growth. They all have, okay, not all, BHF doesn't have a dividend, but back W and WBS has a decent dividend, a short squeeze potential in all of them. On Friday, they went up by 6%, 4.6% and 4.7%. So I highlighted these stocks, I click the chart icon, they will open up with the Q standard entry chart. And let me tell what I'm looking at. WBS was consolidating for a long time. It was below the memory resistance trend lines. They are significant and a breaking of the memory trend line is also significant. So WBS is a possible breakout candidate. I look at the weekly shortly. Let's come to back W, P S C W. This was also consolidating for a long time. And just on Friday, it broke out of the triangle pattern. Here, the candle is looking even better. It gave a bullish flow also. So back W is of interest. It is looking better than the other stock to me. And this is looking probably even better, P H F. Also breaking out from consolidation range also has a bullish flow and this has a bullish pressure. So the, if this is the best looking chart, let me open it up with weekly daily, the standard at a glance template. And the weekly is also having excellent support. 
very bullish shape, bullish color candle in weekly and daily we already saw. If we wanted to look at back tableau, weekly also is having excellent support, daily breaking out. And the last one was WBS. Again, weekly is having excellent support, bullish color, daily is breaking out. In a industry, you may not, in an industry, you may or may not want to take many stocks, but you could choose one of them. There are several other stocks. I don't have much time, but let me explain the bottom up approach. We could do that in radar or sonar, or we could do that in finder. Viewfinder is a unique tool that shows the balance of bears and bulls across all the Q signals. And instantly from the daily graph, we can see that Friday was balanced. The strength signals were bearish, but reversal signals were there. We had a large number of go with flow, also breakouts. So if I went to the bullish chart, and I explained in the video, weekly market roundup, I'm more inclined to look for buying opportunities. I'm going to flag the breakouts. I'm going to flag the trend following go with flow. I am having 66 signals. And if you search here, you will actually find the same stocks. WBS is also here. The same stock that I found from top-down analysis. This is how I find stocks very easily, either from top down or bottom up analysis. And I regularly share them. You may keep an eye on the forum, Twitter page and YouTube page. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks to all of you for listening. Thanks again, Dr. Jeffrey for arranging this session. Dr. Jeffrey, I'll pass the control back to you. Okay, let me see how stop share. Dr. Jeffrey, you have control back? Or let me stop recording also. Okay. Click on make me host. Hmm. Okay, I found your name. More make host. Okay. Okay, control is back to you, Dr. Jeffrey. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Ah, okay. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm back. Um, in about two or three minutes, I'm going to turn it over. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Jeffries, I'm mute. Not anymore, I hope. I'm going to turn this over to John Person. I'm going to go ahead and um, perfect, perfect, perfect. John, I hope you're there. I'm going to make you host in a second. Um, we can start up at 11.20, 11.21. Before John comes in, I just wanted to mention that um, Sagar has an offer today. Um, I didn't give Sagar enough time to go over all of his great tools. So in the makeup hour that I have from one to two, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the things that I use. I mentioned when I did my video this weekend and always mention it that unfortunately being a a big word. You need to have Metastock real time to do some of the things that I use his tools for, um, which is his Q tools besides Q Elite for TradeStation. Um, he also has a tool, like I said, Q Elite for TradeStation as well. He's offered two specials. 
Um, if you are a new user to Metastock, which means an email that was or is not registered ever with Metastock, then he has an offer where if you buy through his site, Metastock, which is not inexpensive, he will throw in one year free of his tools. If you already have Metastock, or if you're only interested in TradeStation, he's generously offered half off the usual price. And his email is tradingprofitably at gmail.com. And thank you for offering that. It's gonna take me one second to cut this video and get ready for John. Um, John will talk starting in a couple of seconds for 45 minutes, and he's gonna give you a, a special of showing you how he uses his tools. And I'm looking forward to that as well. So give me a second, John, I'm gonna make you the host. John, when I make you the host, I'm gonna ask that, um, I I'm gonna set it up and record on computer so it should be fine. So give me one sec, you'll be host. And when you get done, John, I'm gonna ask you to turn me back to host because I will be muted once you come on.